Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is episode number three. Hey guys. A Feed Your Grass. We're back. October 14th. Grass is going dormant way faster than it should. But it's been raining. And it's been cool. Mm-hmm. The rain's going to help. How are y'all doing? We have back. We are back with some more questions. Uh, y'all were kind of not very forthcoming with questions. What's up with that? Uh, we need some more questions. So uh, anyway, uh, Curtis, let's get started. All right. Question number one, Dan asks this. You have been talking about putting pre-emergence out for a while. I haven't done it yet. Is it too late? The answer to Dan's question is no, it is not too late. Negative, Dan. We are putting, we have been putting pre-emergence down for six weeks, six weeks now? Right. We've got a couple more weeks to go. We probably will wrap up the end of October. Uh, I would go ahead and get them out pretty quick. Right. As soon as possible. Do you want to, the, the whole purpose of the pre-emergence is to, you want to keep the stuff from ever having the opportunity to germinate. So a lot of the weeds that you're going to have this winter, they've already, the seeds are already set. They're already there. They're there from last winter. So uh, the products that you're going to use to put down, and that's something we need to talk about a lot more too. I, I, we say products and you need to use this or you need to use that. Um, I, I kind of have been saying, you know, go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's. It sucks. Don't go to Home Depot. Don't go to Lowe's. You can. And I'm not knocking on them. I hope they're not watching. Uh, if you're going to do it yourself, do it right. And if you're going to do it right, you need to go get a, a quality grade product. Not that they don't have it, but per, if you're over in the Bossier area, there's a place called ProPest. It's uh, right over there down from Bipsy. Uh, we'll put the address down here in the comments. And then uh, if you're ever in the Shreveport area, you could go to Ewing Irrigation. Uh, they've got a multitude of different products in there. It really depends on if you're going to use granular or if you're going to use liquid. Um, they have some granular pre-emergence out there. I don't think they work as well. Just my opinion. So, uh, liquid works way better. But that poses another obstacle. If you're going to do liquid, you're going to have to have some sort of uh, equipment. Right. Um, probably the most popular thing for homeowners is going to be you can use a backpack sprayer, uh, or they've got like the little uh, electric motor driven 25 gallon uh, little four get ups. So those are pretty popular. You can drag them behind your lawnmower. But uh, you're going to get a lot better control with the uh, liquid. I would highly recommend the liquid. And there's a couple of different products depending on what you're willing to spend. Um, but the thing about it is, is it doesn't take, they're all really concentrated so you really got to make sure that your equipment's calibrated and uh, that way you get down the right product. And, I, and I've said it, this is going to go contrary to what most people think. Right now is the best time to get on a lawn care program. It, it, and when I say a program, I say a program because you can't just randomly go about treating your yard. It's something that you've got to be very, uh, you got to be very deliberate, very consistent, and, and there's a time and a, and a reason for everything. So, and I say right now is the best time because right now you're going to be able to get your pre-emergence that are going to stop winter weeds, and it's going to also help with the springtime weeds. Um, you know, here in about another month or so, we're going to start putting down heavy doses of potassium for uh, root, root development and things like that. So, uh, what was the original question? I feel like we kind of... Is it too late to put pre Oh, yeah. No, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> no. Go ahead and put it down now, though. I would tell you if you get into November too much... They need to have them down before it gets too cold? Yeah. It's not really cold. It doesn't have anything to do with that so much as it does the the development of the plant. So and and that stuff's gonna start germinating and start seeding out pretty quick. So anyway. Good question. Dan, thank you. <clears throat> Next question, Mike asks us, once the grass ro- stops growing, do I have to do anything else to it? It's a very legitimate question. Dan Mike. No, Mike. Not Dan, Mike. Uh, that's what we were just talking about, you know, uh, once it goes dormant, um, you know, you don't have a lot of uh, pest 
you don't have a lot of things going on with you know pest problems, insects, things like that. Uh, you do want to, you know, November, December, uh, really, really kind of focusing on root development because our cold weather is still pretty iffy then. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're really wanting to focus a lot on root development, uh, heavy doses of uh, potassium, and uh, that just causes for a, a, a thicker, more robust root system, and it allows the grass to be able to uh, winter uh, or go go through the winter a lot, uh, a lot stronger. So it's a good question, though. Yes, you do need to do. You need to do one thing. And you need to put down some potassium for root development. And then, you know, January, February, we're right back into more pre emergence. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm harping about it now, and in a couple of months, we're going to be harping about it again. So, anyway. Our next question is How can I get rid of the scale in my crepe myrtle trees? Mm. What is scale, Garrett? I wish I knew how to get rid of it. <laughs> Scales a pain in the butt is what it is. Uh, <clears throat> you want to take that or you want me to? Scale is specifically scale is an insect, um, but you may notice byproducts of the insects such as it's called honeydew, mm -hmm. which is the black. No, the sooty mold is the black stuff. You is most people see. Common. Most people see the. Most people you're gonna call. Or you're going to get concerned because of all the black mold you're going to see everywhere. It'll be on the ground, right? And all surrounding plants. But it's going to really be specifically around the canopy of your tree, like where the limbs and the leaves are. Um, it can get on the walls, cars, anything that's underneath it. And uh, what it is, the powdery mildew grows on honeydew, which is the byproduct of the scale. The scale is living in the tree and he's doing his business which his business is the honeydew, and then the honeydew lands on whatever, and then the sooty mold grows on the honeydew. So you get rid of one and you take care of two. So I guess that's killing multiple birds with one stone. Right. Uh, scale is a pain. It's hard to get rid of. I, I would tell you that scale is something that it's more of a maintenance program. Um, Meaning that we're gonna we're gonna try to control them as best as we can control the population. Uh, you're really gonna have to do it probably twice a year. The springtime is actually a really good time to do it uh, because you know in in the in the winter time you're gonna trim your crepe myrtles and when you trim them you're gonna actually get rid of a lot of the scale just by simply removing the branches. They're gonna be on the branches and the leaves and stuff like that that you're gonna get rid of. So uh, just by trimming your curtain myrtle, you're going to get rid of a lot. And then uh, in the springtime, a lot of the younger immature scale, uh, it's technically called armored scale because as they get older, they just get this really hard outer shell that's hard to penetrate with uh, insecticides. So when they're younger and mature in the springtime, it's really easy to, uh, to, to have a good control with the... Uh, with an insecticide because they're younger and they're they're more uh, susceptible. So another good time is going to be late summer, early fall. That's really when they get really active. So if uh, if you can do it in the spring and then uh, do it again like late summer, those are two really good times to treat for them. Like I said, you're not going to kill them per se. Uh, you're going to control it. You're going to make the situation better. Um, it's there's just not. A, a surefire way and you're going to do it with two different chemicals um, one of the chemicals uh, is uh, more of a uh, we're going to call it a topical that's like a biofin product and that actually lands on the insect and kills it that way and then uh, there are some other products like a, a metacloprid and stuff like that they're uh, they actually you do like a soil soak and the root systems of the tree will uptake the chemical and then it'll kill the scale as they feed on the tree. The tree has all this stuff in its system, if you will, and that's going to get rid of it. So, very good question, Courtney. That well, was a good question. It's a pain in the butt, though. You can get out there and power wash all that stuff off. I mean, it's it'll, a, it'll all come off. A lot of people have asked me after we've treated some trees, it still looks black. 
um, and that that's a uh, a lot of questions are about that and um, just treating it doesn't remove the the uh, sooty mold or the honeydew it it, it 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 stops them from creating more and it's not going to kill your plant it's definitely going to hinder the growth of the plants but right. it's not going to kill the plants so you don't need to panic and think that you know your all your plants are going to die but you do need to get it treated i mean i guess eventually if they got enough of the powdery mold on it, they would uh, it would probably suffocate them. But the lower, it, it, it the would take on the ground will. yeah, it, it would take a lot, and it would take an extended period of time. So, um, I, you just you don't yes. So I guess I I would guess I was wrong. It will eventually kill them. So, and it spreads. Yes, if your neighbors got have it, uh, that doesn't necessarily you know you can treat your. That's another reason why you want to treat it. You want to try to control it. Because, yeah, I mean, it, it can travel from tree to tree. So, thank you, Dallas. Apparently, that's where it came from. Yeah. Southern Scale, is that what it's called? It's got a bunch of different names. Pain in the butt. I'm going to go with that. That's what we're going to call it. Fair enough. So, anyway, guys, thanks for your questions again. Y'all keep them coming. You can uh, email your questions to info at feedyourgrass.com. Got any predictions about this weekend's game? I do not. I'm not going to make any predictions. What about that bloodbath you predicted? Uh, didn't turn out that way. Didn't did turn it? out that <laughs> way. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. All right, everybody, uh, leave a comment with your questions or email them to info at featuregrass.com. You'll have a good weekend. Thanks, guys. Garrett. Garrett, stop, stop it. it.